Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the um, history of point clouds and uh, elevation data in QGIS in the past four and so years, what has been added, what uh, is there, what has been recently added, and what we have planned for the coming month. Uh, about Lutra Consulting, we are one of the QGIS developers. Uh, in addition to QGIS, we also develop uh, plugins and help others migrate to open source. Uh, we offer support and training for QGIS. In addition, we have uh, a mobile app based on QGIS for data collection. Okay, I start with point clouds. Point clouds, uh, as you might see, this is classification. This is terrestrial point cloud showing the color of the points, uh, and in this case, oops, I went a bit too fast. Uh, this one, I can see, it's a whole city in a, a 3D point clouds. So, uh, as you can see, there are lots of applications for it. There are lots of data behind the scene and uh, handling the data is quite complex, both for visualization and processing. Uh, and uh, it's not a vector data, so you can't treat it like a normal vector data. And thankfully, there is a nice open source library to make use of the reading and parsing those data called PDAL or PUDAL, which uh, should have attended Michael's uh, session this morning to learn more about it. And not only it's a library for reading, but it also handles indexing and uh, uh, doing some analysis. So uh, also we have QGIS, which is an open source uh, platform. It's uh, quite uh, powerful for cartography and analytical side. You can have a QGIS server as well. And uh, like Poodle, which is open source, uh, the, there are lots of uh, open source application also to see specifically point clouds, but uh, uh, we thought why not incorporate uh, the PUDA library inside QGIS so you can bring your point cloud data with your vector data, raster data, web services, etc. Uh, and uh, for that we uh, started uh, uh, crowdfunding, the initial one back in 2020, and the first objective, the objective of the first point cloud uh, crowdfunding was to just incorporate the library inside QGIS so we can read and parse the data and visualize it, and then add some more tools around it. Uh, and then the final one we had uh, was to add processing framework. The, um, uh, crowdfunding was done in collaboration with uh, North Road, a QGIS developer, a uh, company based in Australia, and uh, Hobu, and uh, Poodle developers in US. Uh, so, and, um, just these are some numbers to give you some ideas compared to proprietary software, how much it costs to add such a complex feature to uh, QGIS, the first one was below 60,000 euro, the second one 80,000 euro, and the last one around 90,000 euro. So uh, if you were to add your licenses uh, for proprietary software by contributing to one of those uh, crowdfunding, you could easily eventually have the features you want. And uh, Probably we run another crowdfunding later this year, uh, which I'll talk about later. Uh, the initial release was just visualizing the data uh, for based on the classifications. Uh, <laughs> how did you get on with your classes in old days, <laughs> 20 years ago? So we have the classifications. And then the colors, you can change the colors, transparency, etc. It's in uh, 2D map. And then uh, you can also change the attributes based on the Z value. So you can create a, a 
representation of your uh, elevation model, uh, or you can see your uh, color data RGB. Then uh, you can see it also in 3D, so it's not only for 2D visualization. Uh, you can, uh, we added also the, uh, some visual effect for 3D, so you can see a bit better the differentiation of classes in 3D uh, or in 2D with uh, eye doming. Uh, I go quickly through those features, but uh, you should see all of them either in QGIS uh, uh, release notes or on our blog posts. Uh, then we had uh, ordering, uh, red, rendering order of the points uh, and uh, mm, more information about the classification, the statistics uh, of each class. Uh, also mm, filtering, so you can easily filter your data if you want to just see, uh, let's say, elevation between a range and uh, sorry, uh, classification for, mm, for I think it's uh, ground. So you can do those uh, filtering similar to what you do with vectors in QGIS. You can open the layer properties and do a query builder and filter your data. Uh, then for symbology, you can easily set up 2D and get your 3D to follow the 2D map symbology, so you don't need to set up a whole new symbology for each map. Uh, then in 3.26, uh, we added uh, uh, surface rendering of uh, the uh, uh, points. So if you zoom in the points, you will see some gaps, but by having the uh, renderer set as a surface, uh, it will uh, do a light triangulation of the points on the fly, and you will see a smooth surface. Um, uh, that has been also added in 3.36. Yeah. Then uh, export of uh, uh, point clouds. Uh, if you have been working with uh, GIS, you know that everything ends up with shapefile. So uh, people want to have point clouds as shapefile. Uh, in this example, you can uh, select, uh, do a filter, say, uh, and uh, save the query, save the filter data as a uh, DXF shapefile geo package. It's good if you have got a software which is not compatible with uh, reading uh, PDAL data just to, as a temporary measure. And uh, then in 3.26, you can see here uh, instead of uh, rendering it as uh, points, uh, you can do the same thing that we offered in 3D as a smooth surface. Uh, also in uh, 3.36, uh, we added a feature for um, uh, size of the points. So for each class, uh, uh, you can define a different size for your points, so you can better differentiate between your classes. It's not only the color, but also the point size. Uh, also, if you work with large uh, data sets, some of the uh, uh, point cloud data covers a whole town, city, and then you can uh, clip the data based on your 2D scene, so you don't need to load all the data in the 3D scene. Okay, uh, as a, uh, uh, when we were implementing uh, PDAL in QGIS, uh, there was a standard uh, developed by Hobu, um, and that was Cloud Optimized, optimized Point Cloud. Initially, we used uh, EPT, but then uh, we were one of the first uh, clients to use this uh, uh, format, so instead of indexing in EPT, uh, we have uh, indexed the LAS or LAS files in COPC. Uh, if you want to know more about it, you should uh, look at uh, Michael's presentation, but essentially it's a LAS file and you index your files so you can 
easily uh, load that in your web or desktop client. Uh, and the good thing about it, it's uh, backward compatible. So if you have a client which can't use uh, um, uh, COPC, it's, all, it's a last file, and you just read the normal last file without the indexing. Uh, the um, other interesting thing about it is that you can uh, uh, access it as a local or as a remote. Let's say you have a, a couple of gigabyte uh, COPC file indexed and you want to uh, serve it on your S3 bucket. Uh, so QGIS, it allows you to just uh, connect to it uh, directly as a HTTP protocol and uh, it loads the full data. Um, well, it depends on your Zoom level, but it does all the caching uh, locally and it f loads the data in your um, QGIS session. Uh, or, uh, so this one is an example of EPT. Again, EPT uh, is supported both locally and uh, remotely. Then in the, in the past year, we added a QGIS processing tool, which uh, is based on PDAL, but we have uh, introduced a new wrapper around that for, uh, uh, called PDAL Wrench. What it does, it uh, simplifies those uh, algorithms and filters, and it uh, uh, combines it with the QGIS processing tool, so you can easily access the tools without uh, knowledge of scripting or parallelization. It does all uh, for you there. And you can run it either as a processing tool in QGIS, uh, or you can uh, run it as a, a command line uh, from terminal. Uh, and examples of th these are the tools, uh, uh, convert format, export to raster, so it does all the um, uh, triangulations or uh, uh, creating boundary around a certain class so you can export your buildings as polygons, uh, reprojections or uh, filtering data. And the other interesting thing about each of those algorithms uh, is that each of them works with uh, uh, filtering on the fly. So let's say you want to have a large point cloud and you want to work on the ground data. So what it does, you can apply a filter to the whole data so it will ignore everything else and only deals with the um, class you have defined. Uh, this is clipped by polygon, for example, or density, um, filter by expression, then uh, extract boundary. So here, as you see, we have exported the building polygons, uh, buildings as polygons, and uh, convert to raster. Uh, this is just based on the values of point cloud, or you can do interpolation as well. Uh, tiling, converting data, merging data, and uh, thinning data, they are all there. If you are interested in more uh, algorithms not there, feel free to come and talk to me later. Um, and then another mm, thing we added for uh, the same QGIS version was uh, virtual point cloud, which is uh, similar to virtual raster. It's, uh, uh, you wrap several um, point cloud files as a, around and have a JSON file, so you don't need to create a physical merge of all your point cloud data. It's uh, stack compatible, so if you have a stack COPC reader, it should read that VPC file as well. Uh, this way you can just have a large set of data, COPC files, and I think it creates COPC if it's not there as well. So if you have a last file or last file and run this algorithm to create your uh, VPC, uh, it indexes it as well. Uh, so uh, this is uh, 37 billion points and as one virtual raster um, a vector point cloud layer and you can see how smooth it is for zooming and uh, panning in 3D map. Uh, 
uh, recent improvements in QGIS 3D, uh, 3D, uh, map canvas supports vector, raster, mesh, and point clouds. And in recent versions, some of the things uh, uh, there is uh, vector transparency, like buildings, profile tool, which supports uh, rasters, point clouds, and also you can export it uh, as a, a, a print composer. Uh, you can also see the extent of your 2D, 3D in the 3D map, the camera you are looking at, and the global map shading, so you can get a nice uh, hill shade effect uh, on your item uh, on your 2D map canvas. Uh, the measurement tools in 3D, so it nicely snaps to your uh, um, XYZ planes uh, and you can measure things. Uh, support for 3D tiles, uh, that's uh, funded by cesium, so you have a large uh, 3D tiles. Uh, um, you can uh, now add it as a service in QGIS and uh, zoom in and out in both 2D and 3D maps. Uh, let me skip that. Uh, also, some Python API for 3D views, so you can programmatically create your views uh, in uh, QGIS. That's useful for plugin. If you are writing a plugin, you can uh, do those programmatically to avoid any problems with the camera angle, the scene, light, etc. And this is uh, elevation controller in QGIS 3.38. It uh, allows you to, I don't know why it's not working, but uh, uh, filter your, maybe the next one works, yeah. Uh, it allows you to um, filter data in uh, vertical dimensions. So you can have uh, a raster and you want to limit your um, uh, view of certain Z values. With this controller, you can uh, easily set that range. Uh, it uh, supports continuous data like point cloud and mm, raster data. In addition, it supports multidimensional data. In this example, I have uh, wind data at different uh, isobaric surfaces. So by vertical controller, you can go at different pressure level and also you can move in time at the same time. So you have like a cube data and you can explore all dimensions of it. And finally, the features we have planned for and the upcoming QGIS release 3.40, it's uh, quantized mesh for terrain um, and uh, support for large 3D scenes and uh, globe view. That's it, I think, unless there is a surprise. Thank you. Uh, very uh, awesome thing. We have uh, still 10 minutes for questions. I think you will have next session right after this. That's uh, correct. Yeah, I need to run. Maybe as a warm-up, um, I cannot come to the next session, so I, I ask, will all this awesome 3D cloud thing work also in WASM? Uh, no, unfortunately, no. Not yet. Not yet. Here, any question? Uh, thank you for your presentation. You're and I'm welcome. so impressed, and I've been using your tools this, this last six months, so I like yeah. them more and more. Uh, but one question, uh, when I have data uh, in a format called uh, point E57, what can I do with those point clouds, maybe? I Yeah. So it's one of those things where you may have to build the Poodle um, library yourself to add the E57 library. It's, it's not that common out there. Okay, thanks, Michael. <laughs> awesome. Uh, here was. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, thanks for a great presentation. No is it possible to set the level of details at different zoom levels? Uh, or is it predefined by QGIS? Uh, the zoom level for. Uh, I mean, the, how many points you should load at different zoom levels? 
uh, there is an option for, I don't have it, for the number of points you can uh, see um, uh, in both 2D and 3D, but it's uh, like a global setting as a part of the styling. Okay. So, no, I, that function doesn't exist yet, so. Thank you. No problem. Any more questions? We have some time. Well, I was just going to say that if you were doing the COPSI indexing manually, you can adjust uh, how many points are at different zoom levels. Uh, okay. So you can control that a little bit on the writing and creation of the COPSI file. If you're dragging it into QGIS, it will just convert automatically and you don't have that control. So there is a way to do some additional um, have more points at the, at the higher zoom levels or less points at the higher zoom levels with some custom formatting for the writer. Yeah, I think one of the processing algorithms uh, is indexing, uh, if I am not mistaken. Uh, okay, this one, uh, convert, information match. I can't see indexing here, but I remember there was an indexing, so you can run it from probably PDAL wrench, but I'm not sure. I haven't seen it, but it's okay. Be, okay. Okay. Yeah, so you need to work directly with the uh, PDAL library to do the indexing in that case. Yeah. Any more questions? Otherwise, I will ask one. Uh, what's your kind of uh, long-term dream features? Yeah, there were a couple of listed for uh, next funding, but maybe you have something in mind for the next years, what, what it cannot yet do, but uh, you would like to do mm. next. Uh, we are not users, so we don't have any dreams, really. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, talking to the community, most of them are very keen on uh, point cloud editing, so they want to reclassify some of the data uh, or change elevation of manually. So those kind of uh, point cloud editing is uh, something we would like to include in our future uh, crowdfunding. That's uh, short to medium term. Uh, my, my dream, uh, I worked with point cloud some time ago was to you had this uh, polygon extraction there for buildings, and um, unfortunately, it usually extracts quite ugly polygons, uh, uh, depending on data accuracy, etc. So my, my dream would be converter of these polygons right to that cesium 3D tiles with a beautiful, colorful, uh, uh, clear uh, house models. I don't know how far we are from this dream. Uh, there will be several steps. Uh, one is uh, support for writing 3D tiles. At the moment, we just write, uh, read it. So that's another thing in our to-do list if we get funds. Uh, and then the smoothing, yeah, there should be some parameters for making it uh, smooth based on the density of points. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it's a really complex problem, I know. Yeah. You need to have houses which look like houses, not yeah. like um, simplified polygons or, or something uh, ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and you don't know. Uh, I hope I don't uh, talk any secrets, but in uh, Tr Trimble and my employee, there are some divisions working with point clouds and they have this hardware and everything. Not, not my area uh, specifically, but I know that they are investing for last couple of years into the obvious topic of uh, machine learning and uh, generative models and this kind of... Um, high-end things to, to have from point cloud, uh, sketch up uh, 3D models, something yeah. like that. Um, is it out on the market? Frankly, I don't know, but mm. I've seen that they are investing quite a lot on that, and it's um, really in interesting developments. So, yeah. I hope it mm. comes here also, something like that, but it's super expensive, of course, to use these generative models for this kind of uh, data amounts. Yeah, uh, if, and there is no, as you said, standard way uh, uh, an open source tool at the moment. There are several libraries like Python stuff, but uh, if we manage to get an, an open library that does it, it will be easy to incorporate it in QGIS in the future. Do a lot of this with PyTorch yeah, I was having well, PyTorch. And the um, parquet format is kind of well set up for doing those machine learning uh, implementation models, because then you can 
move back and forth in PyTorch without having to, to convert back to NumPy and other things like that. But it's, it's still early days on it. So. Nobody has a project for that yet. <laughs> the problem is the training models are all done on the rasters. Yeah. Not the easiest task in the world. Uh, any questions?